Hey there, uh, my name is David and I will be your Linode developer advocate for this video. In fact, this video is part of a series that I've partnered up with Linode to uh, kind of introduce people to the idea of self-hosting without the need to get into buying a lot of hardware and that sort of thing, to kind of get comfortable with the idea uh, of setting up Docker containers and that sort of thing uh, before committing to buying your own hardware. So that's what we're doing in this video series. And I do wanna mention that most of these videos are kind of one-off, kind of pick and choose how our which applications you'd like to install on your server. However, I would encourage you to go back to the first video in this series to make sure that we're all kind of starting off on the same footing. Also, head down to the description where you'll find a link to head over to Linode to get $100 in free credit for 60 days to try out their service with no commitments. So as I mentioned, this is just one video in a series of videos. And we started this series by setting up a Docker server on Linode and getting a Portainer and Nginx Proxy Manager installed. We've also looked at a password manager called Bitwarden, a note-taking application called Bookstack, as well as a, a personal relationship manager called Monica. In this video though, I wanna show how to get a to-do list set up called Vicuña. So this is Vicuña's website, and uh, you can see that they've kind of got a, a llama, I believe, back there, uh, kind of as their mascot. And here we can see kind of what it looks like uh, just at a, at a quick glance here. Homepage is very simple, of course. You'll want to check this out and see if it's got the features you're looking for. Um, but we, they do actually have a, a, a try it feature right here. Uh, so if we head over here, we can see kind of just a demo that they've got set up that people are messing with uh, as, as they go. Um, and here we can see we've got a couple of lists. We've got current tasks. Uh, we've got namespaces and lists, uh, labels, teams. You can actually set up teams. Uh, so if you you know had a, a design and a production team or, or whatever, you could uh, categorize different tasks by different teams. Uh, also, what I really like about this is when we come into, uh, into one of these lists, here we can see that we've got uh, it looks like three separate, uh, we're in a Kanban list here. We've got three separate categories that we could drop our different tasks into, or we could look at this in a table format or a Gantt format, or just a simple list format. So uh, very, very user-friendly, very intuitive on how uh, everything should work here. So let's actually take a look at getting uh, Vicuña set up on a Docker instance. So we are going to set this up on the same Docker server that we've used for our other uh, containers that are actually still running in the background right now. <clears throat> so if we head over to Vicuña's docs, uh, they actually have a Docker walkthrough right here. And basically what it's gonna require us to do is create two files. The first one will be a docker compose.yml file. And the other one, if we scroll down a little further, will be an nginx.conf file that we can see right here. Uh, and basically this is all we'll need to put in there. So uh, let's actually jump into to our terminal window to create the files that we're gonna need for this setup. If you're not sure how to find the information that you need to get logged into your server, if we come over here to our dashboard, we can see uh, what's kind of going on with this particular setup. And right up here in the top right, we've got an option for SSH access. If we just click the copy button right there and drag our terminal window up, let's make this just a little bit bigger, like so. And we'll just paste that in there and hit enter. And we'll enter our password. And now we're logged in, so I'm gonna clear my screen like so. That way it's just, just a little easier to read there. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this just a bit bigger. So if you followed my other videos, you'll know that there's a certain uh, folder structure that I like to use when I'm, when I'm deploying Docker containers in a situation like this. So what I like to do is actually go to cd uh, space slash home slash docker. And then we do an ls. And in here, we can see that we've got a couple, in fact, we've got several uh, actual folders in here for Bookstack, Monica, Nginx Proxy Manager, a couple of different instances of that, as well as Portainer and Vote Warden slash Bitwarden. Uh, so for this setup, I think what we wanna do is actually create a folder called Vicuña. So to do that, we're gonna type in mkdir space Vicuña, oops, like so, and hit enter, and then we'll do a cd into Vicuña and hit enter. And now we're in the folder that we want to use for our setup here. So the next thing we want to do is actually create two files. The first one will be an nginx.conf file. I want to do that one first just because uh, we don't have to manipulate that file in any way. We're just going to copy and paste from their docs straight into this file, and then we'll move on to the nginx proxy manager file that uh, we'll take a little time to explore here. So I'm going to type in nano um, and then nginx.conf and hit enter. And then if we come back over, uh, to this, we can again see 
Uh, we can just copy this like so and come back in here and right click and paste. And there we go. Now we've copied everything that we need to copy here. We don't need to modify anything in this file. So we can press Control O and Enter and Control X. And that will just save and exit the file. The next thing we want to create is our uh, docker compose.yml file. So we'll do the same thing, nano docker compose.yml and hit enter. So let's come back over here and take a look at our Docker Compose file here. It's a version three, that's fine. Uh, we've got some services listed out. The first one is a database. We're gonna use Maria Database version 10. Uh, we're setting a, uh, a character set for this as well as a, a, a collation setup. Our environment will have uh, a root password, uh, a MySQL user, a MySQL password, and a MySQL database name. Um, I would definitely encourage you to change the MySQL root password and the MySQL password for security reasons. Uh, if you want to change the user and the database, you can do that. Uh, but also when you do that, make sure to come down here to our next section and change them appropriately down here. Anything that you change up here for usernames and passwords and that sort of thing needs to match down here. Uh, so the next thing we'll look at is actually the next service, which is the API service for Vicuña. Uh, and it, and it, like it says here, we're gonna use the Vicuña API image. Our, our environment will just be some connection information for the database host, which uh, we can see is DB, and we're actually declaring that right here under this service name. Uh, below that, we've got a database password, a database type, a database user and database, uh, well, database. Uh, it's the database name in this particular instance. Um, I guess I, I forgot to mention, we're going to be storing all of these in the folder uh, that, we're, that we're building this in. So uh, that's why we've just got a dot slash and then database dot slash files, and then even further down dot slash nginx.conf because everything that we're gonna do will be right here in this folder. So this depends on the database being up. Uh, and the reason for that is we wanna make sure that the database is up and running uh, and, and settled in before we try to deploy anything else in our stack so that there aren't any conflicts or so that our application doesn't just kind of spin its wheels while it's waiting for uh, the database to come up. It just kind of waits until the database is up and then it will start doing what it needs to do. Below that, we've got a restart policy on all of these actually uh, that is restart unless stopped. So if you have to reboot your server, it'll automatically come right back up unless you manually stopped it before you rebooted the server. So that's what that's for. Uh, below that, we've got a proxy uh, for our next service. And oops, I lied, we've got a front end rather. And basically it's just going to be the image uh, Vicuña slash front end and also with a restart policy of unless stopped. Uh, we've got a proxy, which we're gonna use Nginx for our proxy image. We're gonna put this, uh, this is set to port 80 uh, on the internal and the external ports. We're gonna change that uh, for the external port to be something other than 80 uh, because we're using uh, port, well, so that it doesn't conflict with anything else on our Docker server. Uh, we're actually going to be using the internal ports for, uh, for all of our mapping when we get to Nginx Proxy Manager, but we'll cover that here in just a moment. Uh, again, we've got our, our volumes here for uh, nginx.conf. Uh, and again, this one has dependencies as well for API and front end. Uh, those were already declared up here. Um, and then again, a restart and less stopped uh, restart policy. So that's basically what we're looking at for uh, our, 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 our Docker compose.yml file. However, uh, I have modified it just a little bit uh, in a file over here. Uh, and I'm just gonna point out what I modified. So we'll just go ahead and paste this in here. And of course the formatting's a little jacked, so we'll fix that as we go. So basically all of this is the same, except for I've added this network option here. We're just gonna go ahead and fix this as we go. So basically we want all of our containers to be on the same uh, network so that Nginx Proxy Manager uh, can communicate with them more easily and make them accessible via a domain name that we're gonna set up here in just a little while. So. Uh, basically, I just added the network Nginx proxy manager default that was declared actually in the first video of this series. So I'm just gonna keep scrolling down here uh, and then we're gonna do the, the same thing here. And we're just gonna make sure that all of our formatting looks good. Our, right there. Make sure that we've got everything we've got for proxy. Oops, there's the other one that I forgot. And the front end has that and our API has it and our database has it. So all of this should be good to go. So what we can do next is press control O uh, to, to save and then control X to exit. And at this point, we should actually be ready to deploy our, uh, our new Docker Compose setup here, our stack, whatever you wanna call it, but we're going to deploy multiple containers in this setup uh, for the full functionality of 
uh, of, of Acuna. So what we're going to do in order to do this, I'm going to do Control L again, just to clear my screen. I'm going to do Docker dash compose up dash D and hit enter. Uh oh, okay, so we've got a, a problem on line 36. Oh, I see what it is. Oops, so what, what we're gonna do is come back to here. So there was another formatting issue that I didn't see at first. Um, it doesn't like it if there is. Uh, as, oops, oh, that's fine. To come down here. No, that's, that's fine, so it's on our front end. Oh, there it is. So we need to just delete that space right there. Exit. And then Docker Compose up dash D again. Do, do, do. Undefined. Oh, because I didn't declare it earlier on. I, I, I forgot one little thing there. So what I forgot to do in here is come down to the very, very bottom and uh, actually declare the, uh, the network. Uh, down here and then making sure that it says external so that we know that it was already created prior to uh, this Docker Compose file being uh, being utilized. So now, now after a couple of little trial and error things here, let's clear our screen again and try that again. Oops. There we go. Now it likes our Docker Compose file. So now it's going to go through and pull all of the different containers that it needs uh, in order to make uh, Vicuña run properly. So while it's doing this, uh, so we're not wasting any time, let's head back over to our Linode dashboard and set up our uh, domain name or actually our subdomain for this instance. So we're going to come back over to our, uh, to our dashboard. We're going to come over here to the left hand side. Uh, we're going to go to domains. We're going to go to our domain name here. And basically, if we scroll down, we can see that there are some C names, and we're just going to add another C name. I'm going to call this to do just because I feel like that's a good one to use. Our alias, uh, if I do, if I put the at symbol there, it will automatically fill in dbtech.tips. Just a little time saver. So now we can click save. And now our, our subdomain for to do.dbtechtips or dbtech.tips is set up. So let's come back over and see kind of where things are here. That went really fast. I'm stoked about that. So let's let's take a look. Uh, we're gonna come back over here to Portainer. We're gonna uh, make sure we're logged in, of course. Come over to here, go to our containers, and all of our Vicuña stuff is up and running. That looks good. So let's check that. There we go. This all looks really good. That that popped right up just like we would want it to. So now that we know that everything is working the way we want it to, the next step is actually to grab the IP address uh, of our container. Here we can see that these are all on the same subnet here. So what I wanna do is find the IP address of our proxy. That's the one that was on port 80 on the internal port. And I'm just gonna copy that. Then I'm gonna come over to Nginx Proxy Manager. And here we can see I'm already logged in, but I want to come over to SSLs and I want to add an SSL certificate and click on Let's Encrypt. For the domain name, I'm going to say to do.dbtech.tips and hit enter. You hit enter, otherwise it'll delete it. It'll be frustrating. So we're going to click on test server reachability. That looks good. So now we should be able to create a certificate with no issue there. So we'll click on close. Uh, we're going to uh, say I agree to the Let's Encrypt terms of service and click save. We'll give this just a moment to generate the SSL and store it, and then we'll actually go back and set up uh, our, our, our proxy host so that we can access our Vicuña setup on a domain name. Okay, so now we have our SSL set up, so we can come over to hosts, click on proxy hosts, click on add a proxy host, and type in again to do.dbtech.tips. Of course, you'll put in your subdomain and domain name for that, but that's just what we're gonna do there. Our scheme, uh, we're gonna leave this as HTTP. Uh, if your uh, Docker container had a, a, a built-in SSL, a self-signed certificate, uh, you would switch this to HTTPS. We don't have that, so we're gonna leave this as HTTP. We're gonna go ahead and put in that IP address that we got from, uh, from our uh, proxy inside Portainer over there that we looked at earlier. So for the port, because we're using uh, the actual uh, IP address on the network, we can use the internal port for this. So that's what we're gonna put in there is port 80. We're gonna go ahead and check all these options here, like so. Then we're gonna click on SSL. We're gonna come over and we're going to find our new SSL certificate. And we're just gonna check all of these as well and click save. So now that it's up and going, so now we, if we click right here where it says to do.dbtech.tips, 
there we go. So now our next step is, of course, to log in. So by default, there are no uh, there are no accounts built into this. So what we're going to do is actually register for an account, and we're just going to type in a username and an email address, and then we're going to click on register, and that's. It. That's how easy it is to set up Vicuña for your own task management or to-do lists, whether it's for you around the house or for your household or for your, your business or whatever it is you happen to need a to-do list for. Of course, uh, everybody's going to use a to-do list a little bit differently, so I don't want to go too much into detail on how to set this up because, again, everybody's going to do things a little bit differently, and I don't want to dictate to you how you should run your to-do list. So uh, that's basically all there is to setting up Vicuña uh, with a domain name, with an SSL, uh, on uh, Linode using a Docker server and being able to actually have lots of Docker uh, containers on a single Docker server to save yourself some money. So that basically wraps all of that up. Of course, if you've got questions or comments or anything like that, leave those in the comment section down below. And don't forget to go down to the description where you'll find a link again to head over to uh, Linode to get $100 in free credit for 60 days just to check out their service with no uh, obligation to do anything beyond that. So thanks for your time and I hope to see you guys in the next video.